All right, what's cracking, peoples? It's J. Will, Will's VG Addiction. Happy after Valentine's Day, 15th of February, 2020. I got a package here. I've had this for like a week or so. I ordered it about two weeks ago. A couple of N64 games. Supposedly not working. Don't know what's wrong with them. I think it's one of the Zelda games and Mario Kart, if I remember correctly. So let's go ahead and pop this open and see what we got. Well, it's fairly nicely wrapped. Don't usually expect that much protection, especially for something that's deemed broken. So first game that we got here is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And uh, this one is obviously quite disgusting. Let's shed a little light on that. I don't know what's going on there. If something was spilled on it or is that like liquid damage and rust and whatnot that's seeping through? I have no idea. And this one is Mario Kart 64, fairly clean. Um, hmm. The label's a little messed up, but you'll see on the bottom. Uh, pins look okay on this one, maybe. All right, so if that can be shown on camera, I'm not too sure how well it shows, but there's clearly some rust seeping through the board on there. And then on this one, looks kind of similar but not quite as bad. Maybe it doesn't show. I'm gonna open these up anyway so you can see them, but right in that area. So, let's go ahead and pop. Well, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the pins with a little alcohol and just see what happens when I put them in the machine and turn it off. Excuse me. got a pin that doesn't look like it's all the way there but nonetheless obviously somebody's cleaned these before that one the Zelda is pretty crappy looking but all right let's put them in the machine and see what happens all right so we've got Mario Kart 64 in the machine let's turn it on and see if we get any sort of response at all nothing all right, let's try The Legend of Zelda. Huh. Sweet. I actually thought that was the one that was not going to work. Cool. So we'll still open it up, clean it up, and all that good stuff, but... That works. Again, both of these were sold as non-working. I think I paid like 25 bucks shipped for the both of them. Uh, let's pop them open and see what we could do. So, all right, Zelda works. Mario Kart doesn't. I guess being that uh, Mario Kart does not work, we should open that one up first and check it out. Open them both up, actually, at the same time. But we'll look in uh, Mario Kart. Before we do anything else, put those screws aside. You'll notice I got a ton of screws just every freaking way right now. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mess up here, but I don't care at this point. One of my weekend goals, actually, since this is a three day weekend, is to get this room cleaned up. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. All right. That's uh, pretty nasty. So, obviously, you'll see that there's some rust along here. And then looking at the board itself, it looks pretty bad. And it looks like there's, wow, some, some bad traces. And maybe, we'll see, once we get all this stuff cleaned off. But if you take a look, there we go. All right. So, there's all kinds of nastiness going on right there on the chip side and it looks like this pin is not so hot looking flip it around 
that actually looks like it's been corroded through on this pin right there and you can hear some of that so yeah that one's bad and again some more general nastiness there and what I'm gonna try to do because I have a ton of these um, Japanese versions of Mario Kart and it's not quite as valuable or expensive might just swap the round chips over we'll see I'd rather just try to get this working if, if possible so let's go ahead and do that now first thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna go break out my multimeter I can't remember where the hell I put it but it's around here somewhere so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this stuff off with some alcohol and a q-tip and just kinda get a better look at it might even run this through the microscope and then I'm gonna check continuity and see if this is even worth messing with um, because of the fact that I am planning on selling this I already own a copy of this game certainly don't need another one um, doing like a trace fix on this is probably not gonna benefit me in the slightest so I mean I can do some scraping and run wires like thin wires and whatnot but is that fair to the customer probably not so I might just go ahead and do a board swap but it just depends on what the uh, the level of damage is here so I'm gonna look at this underneath the microscope uh, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to see it unfortunately I don't have a microscope that can record the video oh wow so that pin that I was talking about that was corroded that thing is corroded all the way through I'm actually gonna go ahead and see if I can't put my handy cam a little action cam up to this thing so you guys can check that out I'll do that now all right so this is gonna be hard to see with this cam it does not go very well through the lens at all so I'm trying to steady this thing with one hand but this is what I'm talking about right here this pin has been I mean the board in general has been corroded all the way through I'm sure I can do something with that I can probably fill that with solder or whatever but this thing it's pretty much shot <clears throat> Uh, as far as like trying to sell this to a customer, like it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Looking at, at the pins like this, you'll see all that corrosion and shit. So sure, I can fix this. And you know what? I might just do that with the uh, the other board that I'm going to swap it with but uh, and sell that one cheap. So I'll probably grab like the worst condition Japanese copy I have. If we can focus a little bit in there. Uh, and then fix that one up. But with this one right here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a board swap because, yeah, it looks god-awful. So when I say I have a lot of copies of Mario Kart 64 for the Japanese N64, these are all the copies I still have remaining. I'm sure I got some more uh, up in those tubs somewhere, but this is all the stuff that I don't believe I've cleaned or tested at any point. So I've got a lot to choose from, and you'll see some of the prices on these. 500 yen on that one, so that's like just under five bucks uh, I think the majority of these were 500 yen or so but 324 so like three dollars on that three dollars on that uh, there's probably a couple in here that I paid like a buck for 400 yen 250 you know what I'm saying so it's not like it's not like this is any big loss but um, I still you know it'd be nice to save all of them so what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to find the nastiest copy I have, the most yellow, jacked up copy. Most of these I think are pretty good. Um, I know there was one in here that, I thought anyway, there was one in here that was super dirty and yellowed, but that one's not too hot. That I paid 200 yen for, so uh, label looks okay on that one. Um, I don't know what that stuff is, but looking for one that has a shitty label because people care much more about the label than anything else that one's kind of suspect I don't think I have any uh, that one's a little rough in there I don't know I mean regardless to be honest with you I'll probably whatever it is that I choose I'll probably just go ahead and yeah that one looks pretty bad 200 yen on that one let's check it out I'm gonna try this one out so um, Again, I paid 200 yen on that, so it's like $2. I'll probably be able to sell it for about 5 bucks or so, even with the trace fixes and whatnot. So it's all about letting the customer know and letting them make an informed decision. But either way, even if I get like 2 bucks for it back, you know, I'm straight with it. 
because I will get so much more for the American version. So, again, before I do anything else, uh, before I do anything else, we got to go ahead and clean that up before we put it in the machine. Just make sure it works. I'm sure it does. And then we'll do a nice little board swap. That's happening. I'm gonna turn on my my shiz over here. All right, will it work? I'm sure it will. Or not. This one might not be any better. Hmm. Let's try that again. There's a lot of grime and crap on that one. All right. Second time's a charm. Huh. It's being a twat. There we go. All right. I'm sure it's just dirty. Pins don't look bad. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this bad boy up, swap the chips, call it good. All right, so I was thinking, before I do that chip swapping nonsense, it might be nice for people to see um, what I plan to do as far as fixing this, since I'm gonna fix it anyway. I'm gonna take a look at this under the microscope again. I'm gonna scrape off as much corrosion as I can and uh, see where we're at as far as the traces are concerned. So you probably don't need to see, I mean, I really wish I had a microscope that had a camera on it so you could see exactly what I'm doing, but unfortunately I don't. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just scraping all the brown shit. I'm doing it very lightly um, with an exacto knife. I'm scraping all the brown stuff off of the pins. And I know there's some people that are probably gonna disagree with me doing that, which is fine. But, I mean, you can't really do anything about that one. Once it starts rusting up and turning brown, like the best thing to do, in my personal opinion anyway, is just to get that stuff off of there. Yes, it removes some of the coating that's on the pins, but what does it matter if it's rusted anyway? As you can see here, I've cleaned off a good amount of the corrosion. It's probably going to be hard to see at this distance because I just don't have the ability to have this thing on a tripod and zoom in well enough or close enough. But what you may or may not be able to see here, there is like a hole almost that, I mean, I'm sure I could dig all the way through the other side of the board. I dug some of the brown crud out of there and it just goes to black. So I'm going to have to fill that in with something. I'm going to make sure that we have comp continuity here. And we'll keep it moving. But right now, I'm going to bust out the multimeter. Now that I have a lot of this stuff cleaned up. I mean, at least uh, in the preliminary stages. Uh, and then we'll see what has continuity and what does not. All right, so this one had a bad trace. And let's see. What does that go to? All right, so... That one's okay. That looks okay. This one is just ground, so it doesn't really matter. This one goes all the way up here. That's good. Uh, this one is problematic looking. That still got continuity. Good job. Good job. All right.
right, let's uh, so we got here. This one didn't look good. That's good. That one doesn't look so hot. That's good. That's good. That goes somewhere up here. All right, that's good. That's just ground, so it doesn't matter. That's good. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think we might be good actually without actually having to do any wires of any sort. So let's put this back in the uh, the old N64 and see, oh my goodness. Preview on that Zelda, my God, it looks terrible. All right, so we'll see what happens with this one. So actually before I put that into the N64, what I wanna do is I wanna clean it up. Um, shit, so I'm dropping stuff. So what I would like to do is clean it up. I got this metal polish while I was in uh, Japan and this stuff is outstanding. I don't know if, I'm sure it's just like regular ass polish that you can probably get an equivalent to in the States, but this stuff is great for me. Um, I'm gonna keep using it until we're out of it and then we'll move on to finding something else that hopefully works as well. So what I'm gonna do, and usually this is enough, I shake it up and I'll get a little bit in the head of the cap and I'll just put that on a Q-tip, clean up the pins, just need a light layer. Um, all the corrosion and grime and stuff, just make sure you hit those areas. <clears throat> and I, I know some people don't like to use metal polish which is completely fine. I was against it for a long time, but I'm telling you this shit really helps. So I will grab a piece of an old t-shirt. I like to use cotton. It just seems to work better for me. So I'll go ahead and rub that on there. Let's move that camera just a little bit. Oh God, this thing is, my table is such a mess right now. It's ridiculous. My table is so bad, so much crap on it, it's hard to move this thing around, but... Alright, are we going to focus or what? Pull that out just a little bit, just a little bit, and clean up some of that stuff to the best of my ability now. And I don't know how much of that is oxidation or how much of that is just like the cream reacting with the filth. But I mean, it gets a lot of shit off of there. So that's why I do it. And I haven't had anything react poorly to metal polish since I've been using it. So I think this stuff is pretty good. I'm going to say it's good. Make your own judgments. Some people might say it eats away at it, whatever. So I'll get both sides a couple times and then what I'll do is uh, get some rubbing alcohol and we can use a toothbrush. So two things that I like to do, right? First, I like to kind of saturate my, uh, my board a little bit with rubbing alcohol. This is 99%, just get all that um, that metal polish, that unused stuff off, or the residue, whatever. Uh, get all that crud off. You see stuff still comes off. So I think that's an important step, just so you don't leave that stuff on there, because if it does eat through the board, or through the solder mask, or whatever, you want to make sure you eliminate that as much as possible. I have no idea if it does or not. Then I'll take some electronics cleaner, don't know where the little spout is, so whatever, just spray it on there. And this stuff dries very, very, or evaporates anyway, very, very quickly. It's always nice to have ventilation in here, so I recommend having a fan or whatever, if you can, so don't breathe this crap in. So we'll speed this up by rubbing that off with a clean side of the T-shirt. And then, Grab my little mini cam here. Not the best looking board. However, it's not nearly as bad as it was. 
as far as having corrosion and crap on there. I scraped a lot of that stuff off. Still doesn't look great. I'm still probably going to go ahead and do the pin or the uh, chip swap. But let's see if this thing works anyway. Uh, as I recall, the chip side is the back for N64. So let's try it out, see if it works. Do you think it will? Huh. Interesting. Um, let me see. Okay, so we go back to the drawing board. What what else could be wrong with this thing? <sighs> hmm. I guess I should do this off camera because it, it's going to be boring to watch and nobody needs to see all this. I'm going to go ahead and retest every pin and see where it goes as far as like reaching the chip and whether it has continuity to the chip instead of just like the upper part of the, the trace like I had. Okay, so first problem, this pin right here is supposed to go out to this little via and it does not. Uh, there's a break in the trace right there, so I'm going to go underneath the microscope. I'm going to do some scrape, 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 and fit it with a small wire and see what we can get working. And unfortunately, like I said, I don't have uh, any way of actually recording this to where you can see it, so it's going to have to be like from a far ass view. So I guess I'll just leave the camera on, just tilt it here so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but it's not going to be the greatest uh, viewpoint in the world, sorry. And I'm going to use my microscope to assist me with this, so where are we at? Um, I'm going to do some scraping right here. If I can see, can you guys see? Probably not. Let me move this camera a little bit more so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. At least to the best of your ability. Until one day I'll get an actual microscope. One of these days I'll get an actual camera setup that works. But that's not today. So let's see. Where are we at? So I'm gonna scrape a little bit of this trace. Not to trace, but the mask away here. So I can expose some of the copper. And then actually, let me do that. Probably uh, looks like that might be a break too or at least uh, yeah right about there I think it'll be good all right so I will use a little alcohol and cotton swab to clean that up get all that crud and the impurities off of there and we're gonna grab our soldering iron actually before we do that let's flux it up some Clean that off too. Just a small dab of flux, just a little bit. Right there and right there. And get us a little, I should turn that on too. Fume extractor on. My God, this, this table is a mess. I need to clean this up. It's disgusting. Shit everywhere. So get us a nice little solder blob there. And one right there. And I'm not going to do this like super, super uh, clean because I don't really care that much, to be honest with you. Not on this. I don't really care enough to... do it perfectly probably can't see that this um, I don't know what gauge wire this is uh, 38 gauge wire it's like 
about as thick as like a thicker person's strand of hair or a thicker strand of hair, human hair, I should say. So I'm gonna put this on spot number one and tin that up and get some of the, the enamel off of there so it actually sticks and does what it's supposed to do as far as conducting. I think that's good. Oh yeah. Oh. Give that a slight tug just to make sure it's good. And all right. So I'm gonna bend this just slightly so it kinda kinda curves along the trace. So I don't really need it to, but I don't know. Again, I said I wasn't trying to be super super extra with it. But I kinda wanted to keep the shape just a little. And I'll put that right there just so it holds in place. A little weight on it. But this isn't contoured um, properly to make it flush, so never mind. Well, well, we'll do that. We'll put a little weight on it there just so it keeps it down. And then I'll melt away some of that enamel. And stick it down to the board. Check the continuity real quick. Just make sure it's good. And then we'll tear that bad boy off. Not tear it, but just kind of rock it back and forth so then it breaks the wire that is, the excess wire. I don't think I got enough of that enamel off. Doesn't seem to be making any sort of contact, which is annoying. All right. So that should be good. Try it again. So we'll touch one side to the pin that's affected and one side to the via. And a lot of corrosion on that via too. Alright, so that's good. Let's clean that flux up a little bit and then we shall see if this thing actually works. So, I'm going to get myself a little paintbrush and some alcohol and just kind of clean that off. And that's gentle enough that it's not going to disturb the wire that I, I just made. course just for my own sanity's sake and get some of that stuff up off of the pins so it doesn't interfere with contact and let's see if this fucker works I vote probably not I'm sure there's more that need to be done so we'll pause here we'll switch to the mini cam and see what we got going on but I guess before that we should get a close-up so here's a close-up of the work done I, I don't know how much detail this camera is going to show. I really don't. It doesn't seem like it wants to do a great job of focusing either. So Let's see if we can go underneath the, the microscope on this one to show you. Can you see the wire? If you can barely see it, then I did a good job. 
All right, let's check this out and see if it actually works. Turn on the TV, pop the game in. Wait for the TV to turn on. It's fucking garbage. And then turn on the game. It's shizzle. Bet. So that's one down. I'm not going to do the chip swap now. I don't think I'm going to do that on camera because, I mean, I'm sure you've seen enough of those. And if you haven't, there's plenty of folks out there that do it. So I'll just keep it moving. Good to go on that one. Let's move on.